the situation in, in Pakistan, Pakistani politics is unbelievably complicated. Um, uh, you know, and I, you, you have just cautioned me not to get into history, uh, but it, you, you don't, it's, I, I've mentioned this before, but, um, you know, quoting from Faulkner, uh, in that region, um, the past isn't history, it's not even past. And if, if you don't understand that, and if you don't understand the past as it's perceived in the region, not just how we perceive it, uh, to use a diplomatic term, you're screwed. Uh, 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 you're never going to figure it out. Uh, uh, you know, Pakistan was not as it came into being, was absolutely not Muhammad Ali Jinnah's vision. Uh, the loss of Kashmir, uh, uh, the loss of half of Punjab, the loss of uh, several other Muslim-dominated principalities uh, um, um, led him to say, and I'm paraphrasing here, uh, at the time of independence, this, this pitiful, truncated state. Um, uh, and it is a state, uh, two of whose four provinces didn't want to be part of Pakistan right from the beginning. Uh, uh, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, former Northwest Territories, and Baluchistan. And to a large extent, they still don't. Uh, um, you know, there are four main languages spoken in Pakistan. Uh, you know, many sub-languages. Uh, uh, its whole raison d'etre to be the homeland for the Muslims of South Asia, dubious to begin with, given the number of Muslims who remained in India and uh, uh, entered the Indian system, uh, both politically and economically, and then with the loss of Bangladesh, uh, you know, who are we as Pakistanis? Why are we? Uh, you know, there are fundamental existential issues at play here, uh, which you see reflected in Kashmir and, uh, uh, and elsewhere. Uh, fundamental splits. Uh, the civil-military divide, of course, an obvious one. Uh, but within the civilian establishment, uh, and now really for the first time in, you know, in this context, divides within the military. Uh, that's happened before. I mean, you know, when you lose a war, there are consequences, uh, uh, like 71 in, in um, East Pakistan. But uh, there are things going on in the military where uh, the, the kind of monolithic military I saw in the Musharraf years, 04, 07, when I was there, boy, the chief of army staff is, um, I think, the chairman of a fairly fractious board of corps commanders uh, rather than the absolute leader of the military establishment. And bear in mind, you know, some of you heard, heard me yesterday, uh, the law of unintended and long-term consequences. Let's do this now, it'll feel good. Um, Let's just sanction the hell out of Pakistan over their nuclear program now that we don't need them anymore uh, because we got rid of the Soviets. Um, well, we cut off all training among everything else, which meant no Pakistani officer for more than a decade entered an American military um, uh, school or training facility. That sanctions generation of Pakistani officers are now moving into positions of command. Um, they're your one stars. Uh, you know, the current leadership, including the chief of army staff, I went to at least two of our schools, uh, perhaps three, I uh, can't remember. Um, well, his successor's successor probably will not have gone to any of our schools. Won't know us, probably doesn't like us because lost opportunity. Uh, and I lay all that out just to say, wow, uh, how, how complicated and divided it is, and I haven't even turned to the Islamic insurgency that Pakistan itself faces. Uh, 
Granted, they created their own Frankenstein's monster in many cases um, with Lashkar e Taiba and its ilk uh, that they brought into being in '48 to uh, try to wrest uh, Kashmir from the Indians um, and have supported or tolerated since, uh, but which are increasingly alarming to the Pakistani establishment as they make common cause with uh, groups like uh, the uh, uh, Tri Taliban Pakistan, uh, which is overtly and dangerously anti-establishment. They want to bring it down.